Conservative commentator Matt Walsh has become increasingly explicit in his eliminationist and pro-genocidal stance toward trans people. And this is really important because it's evidence that trans people were not being hyperbolic when they explained how severe and toxic the climate is in the United States with regard to trans issues. And this isn't just any individual. This is somebody with a massive platform who has the ears of lawmakers. And just last week, he called for the execution of doctors who provide gender affirming care to trans youth. Let's listen. Trump also says, uh, as he goes on to say, that the that he would direct the Department of Justice to investigate hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, uh, doctors to find out if they've been involved in a cover up of the horrific long term side effects uh, and uh, of gender transition drugs and surgeries. Now, the answer, of course, is that, yes, they have been covering those things up as any genuine and thorough investigation will clearly show, which is why the next step under a Trump administration or any Republican administration should be to arrest the culprits, the um, hundreds and hundreds of them, if not thousands of them, and throw them in federal prison. Now, this can't be a matter of simple fines and financial penalties. I mean, that should be part of it. But uh, the only real recourse here, the only semblance of justice would be prison sentences, very long ones. Now, if it were up to me, we, you know, we'd go... Further than that, as far as I'm concerned, mutilating and castrating children should be legally considered a capital crime and it should earn the prescribed penalty for such crimes. But if we can't have that, then prison will have to suffice. These are all very positive developments. He's just saying the quiet part loud. Now, Matt Walsh may be a monster, but he's no dummy. He knows what's entailed with gender affirming care. He knows that you don't qualify for bottom surgery until you're 18. And even then, it's difficult to get it since it's cost prohibitive. And when it comes to mutilations, I mean, he doesn't care about the actual mutilations taking place in the United States. More than 50% of male infants, at least as of 2010, are given medically unnecessary circumcisions, and he says nothing about that. Additionally, he doesn't condemn the cisnormative surgeries given to intersex infants with ambiguous genitalia. That is tantamount to mutilation, and he says nothing about that. So he doesn't care about mutilation and he doesn't care about kids. He is lying to his audience so that way when they hear the words gender affirming care, they're primed to think mutilation. It's a propaganda tactic. And he is deliberately lying on a number of issues, but we know that he's lying not just because what he says is factually incorrect, but because he was caught lying on the largest podcast in the world, no less. How many people have had this done? Depends on what, I don't think we have exact numbers, but it's, if we're talking about the drugs, it's, I mean, millions. Um, Are you talking uh, about human, hormone blockers? Yeah. Uh, millions of kids have been on hormone blockers, really? Uh, I, I'm sure someone's going to fact check me on me, but my, my, my guess is that we're, in, we're into the millions now at this point. Yeah, that would be my guess. It okay, says no. over the last five years, there were at least 4,780 adolescents who started puberty blockers and had a prior gender dysphoria diagnosis. It says it's kind of undercounted, but that's that would be a big less than a thousand people a year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would guess you know hundreds of thousands at this, but I could be wrong. Million sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does sound great if you're trying to delegitimize an entire group of people by using the think of the kids argument. And this whole think of the kids argument is nothing new. It has been used to deny civil rights to other marginalized people. Just recently, gay couples. Think of the kids. How will I explain gay marriage to my kids? But we need to be very clear when we're talking about trans issues. Conservatives are just using children as an emotional Trojan horse to sell people on transphobia for people who are trans of all ages. And he recently admitted that he supports a universal ban on gender affirming care, a ban which would apply to adults. And he's been pretty open about that. No, adults should not be able to transition as well. That's not a straw man argument. That's what he says. He's pretty out and proud about how fundamentally anti-freedom he is. But this isn't surprising because this individual is a self-described theocratic fascist. So, of course... He's going to be against trans people. And any way that we can erase trans people out of existence by forcibly detransitioning them, by changing the law, or driving them out of the country with these anti-trans laws, that is a win to him. And again, I'm not being uncharitable to him. 
He says this. In fact, he responded to a trans woman pleading with lawmakers in Minnesota to protect her family by saying it is good that she wants to leave the country. Let's listen. As you may be aware, there's a torrent of damaging, ill-informed, and outright malicious legislation being introduced across the country targeting transgender and gender expansive people broadly, but trans children in particular. It is our daily experience to be forced to keep track of which state is safe for us to visit. Minnesota has been overall very accepting and supportive of our family, but even then we don't feel 100% safe and assured that we will be able to get the gender affirming care that both of my kids need and deserve. Very recently, an amendment was proposed to House File 16 in Minnesota, which bans children's conversion therapy in an attempt to ban essential health care for transgender children. This happened in our state. Because of this, my trans partner and I frequently discuss plans to flee the country if these targeted, hateful bills keep being introduced or passed. This person is married to a trans person, and then what do you know? Uh, they also have two children who, who just so happen to be trans. But remember, there's no social contagion aspect of this. And, and uh, well, certainly no one is turning children trans or encouraging them to be trans or planting these ideas in their head. No one is doing that. That's a conspiracy theory. And what, yet, yet, what, what do you so often find? You so often find that uh, so-called gender expansive adults tend to have "quote unquote" gender expansive children. I just feel, I mean, you, you feel horrible for these kids. What chance do they have in the world? And that's what stops me from, you know, he he says that oh, well, we're gonna, I want to flee the country. Well, if, if he himself flees, uh, and, and he's doing that, you know, in part in response to some of the laws that, were, that, that are being passed around the country, then I consider that another great benefit of those laws, except that he has kids he'd bring with him. And they're the real victims in all this. So his response to watching a trans woman plead with lawmakers to protect her family was good. If she leaves, that is a great benefit of these anti-trans laws. He's quite literally saying, I want to drive trans people out of the country. But that's just one of the things that he wants to do to eliminate trans people out of existence. Again, if you can forcibly detransition them and get them to kill themselves, that is a win for Matt Walsh. He's saying this. All you have to do is listen to him. He's a deeply hateful and mean person. In that same video, he went on to misgender her constantly. He compared her to Grimace, the McDonald's mascot. He's just deeply, deeply mean and bigoted. And he said that since she also has trans children, that's essentially evidence that social contagion is not a conspiracy theory and it's a real thing. And trans identities are further delegitimized by that fact. Now, listen. I don't know the particulars of that situation, but trans youth, not every single family accepts them. In fact, a lot of families reject them. This is why LGBTQ plus homelessness is higher than homelessness for straight youth and cis youth. So sometimes LGBTQ plus adults will adopt children who have been rejected from their families. And I don't even know if that's the situation, but it could be the situation. And statistically, it seems unlikely that you'd have two trans kids. But either way, the fact that these kids are trans is not the issue because being trans is perfectly valid and legitimate. And this family in the United States of America, a supposed free country, should be able to live the way that they want. But Matt Walsh is saying, no, they should live the way that I dictated. And if they refuse to comply with my demands as a theocratic fascist, then we will do everything we can to drive them out of the country or get them to kill themselves. He is saying this. So this isn't surprising, right? We all know this about Matt Walsh, but I think that he's really important because it's reaching a situation in this country where I don't think that it's hyperbolic to say what's being attempted is a genocide against trans people. When you look at the laws and how increasingly they're shifting away from children and proposing bans on trans adults. Oklahoma proposed a ban on anyone under the age of 26, and that would force adults in that state to detransition if they've been who they were for years. So 
This is important because anytime somebody pushes back and says, no, it's not genocide, it's not eliminationist, you're being hyperbolic, all you have to do is show them Matt Walsh, and that's confirmation that trans people, in fact, haven't been sounding the alarms enough. All of us haven't been sounding the alarms enough because really what's happening here is a genocide that's taking place in slow motion. And Matt Walsh isn't the only one who's being more explicit. More and more Republicans are being vocal and open about the ways in which they want to eliminate trans people out of existence. And you can do this in a number of ways. They've gotten creative in their transphobia. You can try to hide trans people away, force them to detransition or drive them out of the country, deny medically necessary life-saving care to trans youth so they kill themselves. Any way that they can eliminate this group of people from society, that's what conservatives want. So the next time somebody says, mm, it's not that serious, this is this is nothing, this isn't a big deal, you're being hyperbolic, all you have to do is show them Matt Walsh. And that's evidence that it's not hyperbole to say that this is an attempted genocide. We should be sounding the alarms more because this is a community that has been already marginalized, has been already vulnerable. But conservatives are exacerbating the issues that they've already been experienced. So we need to be vigilant and we need to understand what we're dealing with. And Matt Walsh is, I think, a good gauge as to how far we've fallen as a country and how much this group is targeted.